Welcome back. It's 810 on your Saturday morning. Now we're here to talk about a problem that can be very painful for your pets if it goes untreated. We're joined once again this morning by our pet vet, Dr. Jennifer Crow from Fisher's Veterinary Hospital. We are talking about hip dysplasia, something that probably many of us have heard the words before in one of those medical commercials for a new drug or treatment that's out there for humans. But pets can have this too. They can, uh, and it's, it's pretty common. It is something that they have from birth, but a lot of times we don't hear about it until they're old and they have arthritis. Wow, okay, so the arthritis is the painful part? Arthritis is the painful part. So hip dysplasia itself is a loose ball and socket. So instead of that hip joint fitting nicely together, that socket is loose. Okay. And so after years and years of this extra rolling around in that joint, then they have arthritis. And you brought this model along too to kind of show us what it looks like. How so does work? even though Halloween's over, we still have some <laughs> bones. Um, but basically, after the excess movement over time, we get all these extra bony spurs, and then it, it hurts when they move around yeah. because things just clink and, and grind together. You can see why that might be painful for your pet right there. Yep. What, what do you do if your pet has it? So it's something that we would like to identify early because they have it from birth. Sometimes okay. if it's pretty bad, you can hear them pop when they walk as a puppy. Um, we try to do screenings at the Fisher's Hospital when they are getting spayed or neutered. We can x-ray them young uh, because with our pets, we do hip replacements when they're young so that they don't cr have this problem rather than when they're old. And if they have hip dysplasia, but it's not bad enough to warrant mm -hmm. surgery, then when they're two to three years old, we start joint supplements so that we can be proactive against it. So the first clue might be something like a popping sound or something along those lines, and that's when you just gotta go talk to your vet. That's the first and best step, right? Yep. All right, Dr. Crow, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming in today and always.